All right, so we are finishing up 6.4. Um, be ready for a formative quiz on 6.4 on Monday. Okay, so bring charged Chromebooks on Monday. We are looking at simplifying expressions that have those rational exponents in them. And our note here says you can simplify a number with a rational exponent by using the properties of exponents. So in other words, when do we add the powers, when do we multiply them, that kind of thing. And then um, also by converting the expression to a radical expression. Okay. So my note here says sometimes it helps to convert back to radical form. Right now we have 16 to a negative 2.5. I want you to be able to do this without a calculator. Okay. So step one. What is 2.5 as a fraction instead of a decimal? So 2.5 would be 2 and a half, yes? As an improper fraction, what would that be? Okay. So I'm going to rewrite this as 16 to the negative 5 halves. What does a 5 halves power mean? Okay, so the bottom number is the root, right? We're taking a square root, and then we're raising it to a fifth power. Yes? And the negative is going to do what? It's going to cause it to flip. Okay? So let's deal with the negative first. Flipping this over is going to put the 16 in the denominator. Okay? The 2 in the bottom of my fraction means a square root. And then we said we also have to raise it to a fifth power because of that 5 in the numerator. Okay, now to simplify this, what is the square root of 16? 4. So this becomes 1 over 4 to the fifth. And then using your power chart, what is 4 to the fifth power? Grab your power charts. 4 to the fifth. Okay, 1,024. All right, you guys try the next one. All right, let's check. A four-fifths as a rational exponent means we are taking a fifth root, and then we are also raising it to a fourth power, correct? Okay, what is the fifth root of negative 32? Okay. So we have to take negative 2 now to a fourth power, which gets us 16. Positive 16? Yes. A negative 2, an even power is going to come out positive. Questions on either of those two? All right. How are these different? If you look at the first few examples here. What's different about them? Are they the same? They look a little more complicated to me. Why? There's variables in there. Plus, they're mixing radical symbols and rational exponents. Yes? All right. The note I have for you here, it says, to write an expression with rational exponents in simplified form, every exponent must be a positive integer. So we are going to, if we have fractions left over, we want to convert them back into that radical notation. All right? So we don't have that denominator um, in our power. We have it as a root symbol. All right, so the first one. We're actually going to skip to B. Let's do B first, and then we'll go back to A, since B is a little bit easier. We have several things in parentheses. We have a 16. We have a Y to a power. Both of those pieces are being raised to a negative 3 fourths. Okay, so I'm going to split it up. I'm going to say the 16 is being raised to a negative 3 fourths, and the y to the negative 8th is also being raised to a negative 3 fourths power. All right, looking at the 16, there are three things happening to that 16. The negative is going to do what? It's going to what? Move it to the denominator. Yes, it's going to flip it over. So that 16 is going to end up in the denominator. Then we have a 3. What does the 3 do? What does the 3 do? 
cubing it, okay? And then the four in the denominator is going to do what? So four in the denominator of our power does what? Fourth roots, Fourth roots it. So I'm going to write the 16. I'm going to flip it over. Okay. I'm going to do a fourth root of it, and we then have to raise it to a third power. Okay. What is the fourth root of 16? Two. What is two to the third power? So this becomes an eight for my denominator. Okay. Now, looking at the y, we have it to a power and then raised to another power. What happens when we have a power to a power? All right, let's multiply. What's negative 8 times negative 3 fourths? We've got 24 fourths, which is 6. All right, so the y is just y to the 6th power. Is that going to be in the numerator or denominator of my answer? Good. All right, let's go back now to the first one. What makes this one a little bit harder is that we have radical symbols and rational exponents. We can write it all with rational exponents, all right? So I'm going to rewrite this as negative 8x. The x and the y that are under that square root symbol means both of those are being square rooted. In rational exponent form, that would be a 1 half power. Okay, so I just put everything in terms of a rational exponent instead of the radical notation. Now, the two-thirds on the outside applies to everything inside. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and distribute that in. I've got negative 8 to a two-thirds. Um, can we combine these x's? It's the same base, right? The first one is x to the first. And then I have an x to a 1 half. What do I do when it's the same base? What do I do to the powers? I add them. What's 1 plus a half? 1 and a half. As a fraction? 3 halves. OK. So this becomes x to the 3 halves, and it's still raised to a 2 thirds power. Yes? All right. Then I have a y to a 1 half raised to a 2 thirds. All right, let's clean it up. The threes in the denominators means we're doing a cube root. So what is the cube root of negative 8? And then what is negative 2 if we square it? All right, so this first piece becomes a 4. What do we get when we have a power to a power? We're multiplying. What's 3 halves times 2 thirds? 1. We just get x to the first. Yes? Okay. Now, for the y, we have a 1 half times a 2 thirds. The 2's cancel out. We get a 1 third left. So we have y to the 1 third. Yeah, I'm going to put it in that radical notation as the cube root of y. Okay. All right. I'm going to pause the recording. I want you guys at your tables to try the next two. All right, let's check your work. Everything inside here is being raised to a negative one third. All right, that means we are cube rooting the eight, turning it into a two. The negative is going to flip it over and make it a one half. Yes? All right, the x to the 15th to a negative one third. We are multiplying 15 times negative one third. You should have gotten negative five which means we have to flip it, so it's going to end up in the denominator. Okay? Our next one. We have a 9 being raised to a 3 halves power. We have an x being raised to a 3 halves power. And we have a y that has two things happening. It is under a square, uh, fourth root, so it's being raised to a 1 fourth power. And then it's being raised to a 3 halves power. Okay, simplifying, we are square rooting the 9, makes it a 3, and then we are cubing it. All right, so we have a 27 for the first piece. 
We have an x to the 3 halves, and we have a y to the what? 3 eighths. Okay, now, we said when we simplify, we don't want any powers that are still fractions, so we would have to convert some of these back into radical notation. X and y can't be put, can't be added together, they're different bases, but what we do want is to be able to put them all under the same kind of root. Okay, I don't want a square root over the x and an eighth root over the y. So I want you to picture getting common denominators, even though we can't add them together, get the same kind of root. So that three halves you could convert into what? Twelve eighths? Yes, times top and bottom by four? Yeah. Okay, so we have 27 x to the 12 eighths, y to the 3 eighths. So now I can put those variables under an eighth root symbol. I have an x to the 12th and a y to the 3rd. Are you with me so far? Yeah. Okay, now, I have 12 x's inside there. Do I have enough to make a full group? Yes, so I'm going to pull a full group of x's out. I still have how many left inside? I still have four x's and the y's, there were only three, so I don't have enough to pull any out. Okay, that would be your simplified answer. It looks simplified, right? Sure. Sure. Okay. All right, we have four questions left. It's kind of a mixture of the different types that we've been looking at. For the first one, what is it asking me to do? I want to be able to add the powers, yes? I have the same base to a power and then that same base to another power. So I want to be able to add the powers together. In order to add them, I have to have common denominators. So let's get common denominators. The one half could be rewritten as two fourths. Okay. Two fourths plus three fourths gets me five fourths. Now, in general, We've said if it was given to you with rational exponents, we would let you keep it in rational exponent form. Okay? Um, if you wanted to convert that, we would have the fourth root of a to the fifth power, which means we actually have enough a's that we could pull some out. So we would end up with a to a and then a fourth root of a. Okay? The note up top here says, simplify in parentheses first, if possible. When you look at this next one, do you see some things we could clean up? Yes. All right. 27 and 8, can we reduce that at all? All right, we're going to leave that. The x's, we have 5 in the numerator, 2 in the denominator, which means we have how many left? Where are they? Okay, so an x cubed on top. Uh, 10 y's on top, 4 on the bottom, 6 left over in the numerator. Yes? Now, it is to what power? That whole thing is to a 1 -third, which means we are really doing what? Cube rooting. What is the cube root of 27? What is the cube root of x cubed? x. The cube root of y to the 6th. Okay, and the cube root of 8. All right, that is simplified. All right, I'm going to pause the recording. I want you guys to try the last two. All right, distributing the negative 1 half exponent to all the pieces. All right, a negative 1 half power for that 9 is going to do what? It's going to change the 9 into a 3, and it's going to flip it over, okay? So the 3 ends up in the denominator. It's a 1 instead of a 3.
okay? The x's, negative 4 times negative 1 half, okay? x squared, it's not negative, so we don't have to flip it over. The y's, 6 times negative 1 half. Negative 3, because it's negative, we're going to flip it. So that y cubed is going to land in the denominator. You okay with that? All right. Last one. Is there anything inside the parentheses that you could clean up? Yes. What do we end up with for inside? X to the ninth, right? Picture bringing those seven up to the top, adding them with the two that are already there. All right. Power to a power, we multiply. What's nine times two-thirds? So we end up with X to the sixth. Okay? Now, we're going to do one of your homework questions together. Because in your homework, it's going to tell you you have to rationalize. If you still have things left in the denominator, to rationalize it. So we are going to do the sixth root of 4 divided by this, the cube root of 4. Okay? Now, they are different kinds of, of roots, correct? So let's rewrite it in fraction exponent form. This would be 4 to the 1 6, and the denominator would be 4 to the 1 3rd. Now, there's a couple ways you could go about cleaning this up. Because our bases are both 4, we'd like to be able to subtract the powers. They don't have a common denominator, but we can get one. Okay? We end up with 4 to the 1 6 over 4 to the 2 6 would be the same as 1 3rd. What happens when you take 1 sixth and subtract 2 sixths? All right, so we end up with 4 to the negative 1 sixth, which means we have to flip it over. Okay, so we're back to having it in the denominator. Now, a 1 sixth power means we're taking a sixth root. So think about it the way we did at the beginning of this chapter. We're doing the sixth root of 4. We need to rationalize that. So can we think of 4 as 2 squared? Thinking of it in terms of its prime factors. So we are trying to make how many 2's in that denominator? We need a group of 6. We have 2, so we need 4 more. So to rationalize this, we are going to multiply by the 6th root of 2 to the 4th. Okay, so far? All right. Have we made a group of six of them in the denominator now? So now we can do the sixth root of two to the sixth, which is just a plain two. Okay. Now, in the numerator, we have one times the sixth root of two to the fourth. Now, Think of that as a rational exponent. The sixth root of 2 to the fourth becomes 2 to the 4 sixths. Can we reduce a power, a fraction of 4 sixths? Four sixths is the same as 2 thirds. I'm just reducing a fraction. Four six can be reduced to two thirds. It's just like we changed a one half to a two fourths earlier, right? We're writing an equivalent form of it. This means we are squaring the two and we are cube rooting it, correct? So we are cube rooting two squared or four and dividing by two. That would be your most simplified version of that even though it took us a while to get there, okay? That would be the rationalized version, okay? All right, so your homework is on page 386. Make sure any denominators that have rational exponents or radical symbols in them get rationalized.